If you want to be able to build this in Planet Zoo, then stick with me with my updated 2022 7 episode tutorial series. In this series we are going to cover the basic controls, landscaping, pathing, barriers, building, foliage and enrichment. And since many things have changed since 2019 when my last tutorial have been online, here's a brand new series you can build along. The park is available to download, but now let's begin. Hey everyone and welcome to the next one of our tutorials. Today we're going to take care of barriers. Now barriers are very important for a zoo game because they are basically the tool that will allow you to map out where your animals are allowed to walk away and walk around and, and just live and have a good time. Now barriers are found through this tab down here which is called, uh, very conveniently, barriers. So uh, that's how you do. Now, a couple of things have changed in the last update. We now have uh, small habitat gates and the big habitat gates. We have uh, guest gates and we've got wooden track airlocks and a uh, glass track airlock. And we also have a track airlock. Um, there are a couple of things in here. But first of all, before we do our actual uh, wonderful build, I'm going to explain a couple of things to you for the barriers. Now, um, there are several different types of barriers for different um, resistances and uh, grades and stuff like that. So first of all, um, we do have uh, gates. I'm just going to click the gate area in. So we've got the normal habitat gate, um, which uh, comes in two variants. Um, whoops, I should have used the other one, which is that one. Um, also, why do we have... Oh, actually, this is a new one. Oh, Oh, we've got a new one. I didn't know about that. We've got a glass gate as well. Now, I didn't throw that one. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, you've got the small one and you've got another small one. Oops, I should have put that to the same side. Um, and then you've got an airlock and you've got another habitat gate and you've got just another one over here. Just putting them all next to each other. Now, you can see uh, some of them are connected with the pathway and some others are not. This is where uh, your track rides come in to play and I'm just going to quickly show that to you. All right, so here you have the example. I just put down a flat ride and as you can see, there is like an auto connect uh, to this wonderful gate, as you can see here, just click it. And then once it's connected to that gate, um, this card will actually translate or transfer through here by automatically opening the doors. And that same thing happens for all the other rides that you have in the game as well. Now that said, this is um, kind of uh, all the possible ways you have for the AI or the guest to come into your habitat. Um, speaking of guest, this is a exactly the only gate we have for our guests to enter a habitat. Uh, be mindful of which animals you grant them access to though, because obviously not all the animals like guests in there. Um, some of them might like actually guests in there as food, while others um, just are too shy to have them in. So that's something we are going to talk about in a later episode of the tutorials. Now, as I said, these are all the possible ways of barriers. Now, we also do have certain differences in the actual barriers. Now, let's quickly talk about those because um, this is just really quickly done. Now, first of all, we've got the invisible, the so-called null barrier. The null barrier is, I guess, the potentially most used one, um, simply because it gives you the most freedom with the null barrier, you basically just paint a certain outline of a habitat, as I'm just doing over here, um, and that is the area in which the animals are in. But um, if I'm clicking away this one, you can see it's vanished. There is nothing to see anymore. Once you start building, though, you are going to get an outline if you said, I want to see them, and now you see the outline of the habitat, so you know where it is. This is very helpful because um, in case you're using this, you need to make sure that you use other things to block the animals away from passing that border because if you would drop an animal here in the middle it's gonna straight run over this and escape is marked as escape from the habitat so what you got to do is build a fence build a wall build a ditch build a water stream whatever helps to prevent the given animal that you use in that very habitat um, from escaping we are going to talk about that in a later episode especially but now as we have built that we are going kind of the, you know can talk through the different types. Now we've got the concrete one and if you want to replace it you just click on that and then just click the one you want. You can then go to glass, to wood, to mesh, to another kind of uh, red brick, you can go to gabion, you can go to corrugated, you can go to chain link, blah blah blah, you get the idea. Some of them are even recolorable such as the corrugated and the concrete one. Um, these ones you can basically turn into each color scope as you want as you can see over here. Pretty simple and what 
what you can also do, you can also change the um, kind of form factor of the top. This is by, uh, done by putting down here the curved barrier top. Clicking that one is enabling another menu where you can set the degrees. So the start angle is always from where you started to build. So that's the left hand side here. And the end angle is where you end, which is that side. So if you click here, you can see it's going to raise that. You always have to keep in mind it is the opposite way. So the starting point is a positive is going down and the end angle is a positive going up. So if you want to kind of make the same thing with the same kind of, uh, you know, tilt, you can just go to 20, minus 25 over here and then you've got a perfect roundish um, top of this very given piece. You can do this with every piece, obviously not with a null barrier, but you can even do that with a hatch over here, giving the hatch kind of a little nice shape if you want to do so. So a couple of things you can do, nothing really uh, too crazy, but you can go crazy in terms of which types of forms you want to use sometimes especially in franchise it does make sense to keep working with the barriers however one thing is very much uh, important if you use the in-game barriers so all barriers within that menu they will deplenish over time so that means they will lose strength they go break and your animals can escape by hitting this um, gate or this uh, wall or whatever if your mechanics are not there for maintenance now that costs you money and money is obviously an important thing especially if you play hard mode so in hard mode it is very much uh, recommended to walk uh, to work your way through this with the null barrier because that one doesn't cost anything as you can see over here it also costs null to put down and you can use the in-game pieces to create the wall you want to have now again you've got a, a couple of different things you've got the thick glass over here which is used for some of the uh, aquatic stuff which came also with the aquatic updates um, so you have different types of walls you can use but you can see um, the form factor even maintains when you replace that now Finally, they have changed something in the last update. Now you can also build every single wall curved from the very beginning. So in order to get the curve, you can either hold down Z or Y on your keyboard. It depends on if you have a German, European or US keyboard. That's where Y and Z just sometimes are switcherood. And that means sometimes you have to um, use the other key, but it is either Y or Z. And then you can just make this go bend as you can see over here. Once you click one time, afterwards it's going to bend automatically. As you can see, now I can build certain things. You can also have angle snap locked. All these things that we learned with the path tutorial do obviously apply over here as well. And so you can also make uh, various different form factors as you can see over here. Very helpful indeed. Um, but now there is a very specific thing we need to talk about as well and that is climbing so some of the fences are obviously not the best fence for climbable or for animals that can climb especially that one over here because they can use the uh, kind of structure over here to climb over the fence now there are ways to prevent them from doing so because some of those walls that are climbable have another option over here as you can see which is called climb proof if i click on another the one this one for example you don't have that option simply because this is a glass wall which can't be climbed anyway and so if you're using that your animals won't be able to climb over it while on that one they can in order to make sure they don't you can either have one sided uh, to the outside this would be very stupid in this case because that's the exact wrong side but you can also change the side by clicking the other area over here and then you have this climbing proof uh, thing it's actually looking like some of the zoos do that you can see there's like a little wooden uh, pillar in, in behind and then you've got the metal above it so that animals won't be able to climb over it. And you can even have that on both sides if you have a habitat that is uh, or like a, you know, a wall that is between two habitats and both of the animals shall not climb into the other habitat. Now that said, there is even more to talk about and that is especially um, using these things as habitat parameter. I don't know if you've seen that, but there is this one opening, uh, there's this one option over here, which is called the habitat parameter. And this one defines if this is calculated as a given 
a piece to really make the marker for a habitat. Sometimes it can be very helpful to deactivate that one if you just want to have a a glass panel to create like an underwater viewing for example but this is within the actual habitat to not confuse the habitat you can do so one example is if i do kind of make a, a connection in between here in the middle like this um, normally this would become two habitats but since i haven't given this the parameter rights it's not two habitats but if i do do this now and say you know what it is and now i place a gate in there as you can tell over here I'm just doing these two, we've got two different habitats. So if I click on the gate, you can see this is one habitat and that is the other. But if I go back in here and change this to none, then we are going to get an issue because we do have only a broken habitat over here since we've got multiple pieces because now it's going to take the entire thing. So if I'm going to say goodbye to this gate and click back on, you can see it's taking again the full square as a habitat and this wall in between is not seen as a habitat parameter anymore. So this thing, or like this option can be used very often uh, again as you want to use these habitat barriers as kind of a little barrier within your habitat. So very good that we do have all these different options. Now um, that is so to say the basics about a barrier placement. Now we will actually use that on our given habitat over here. Uh, but before we do so, I'm going to show you how we get rid of these things because sometimes it is very important to clean up the mess we've done. Um, and now I'm going to show you some options because they added certain things in, uh, you know, in the game to make our life a bit more easy. And that is that button over here, especially, which is with one click selecting the entire habitat. You could now with one click raise and lower the entire fence or just do a right click onto the whole thing and then it's gone. Um, honestly, that was one of the best changes in order to speed up uh, the overall process um, obviously you can't really do that um, on here because this gate is always being one piece but what you can do you can just drag all the way over to both sides so just like that and then select one and do the right click and everything is deleted except some of the paths that have been laid down uh, but we can just easily because we learned about that just get rid of the path and then we are clean look at that guys so let's move over and have a look what we do over here with this habitat. Now, as I said last time, this is going to be like a nice little habitat and I want the animals to be able to roam around in this area. I want to build like a, a wonderful building over here in which we can see something uh, and we want to have this area in which um, they can either roam around or whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put down first of all the concrete barrier now the concrete barrier is a, a very good thing because you can uh, do a lot of cool stuff with it which i'm going to show you in a bit and we are going to outline this whole thing from over here and i'm using the bended mode um like so because then i can get closer to the pathway just like so um just doing it that way and now from over here i'm just getting rid of the angle snap i'm using shorter segments just to gain a little bit more control and over here if you want to go there you can also just change as you can see i just changed the overall bending a little bit uh, i'm just going to go shorter here in order to have that bend a little less like this and then i'm just going to go with this making like maybe this is going to be like a little planter over here and then just trying to reconnect with that area and now this one is going to be left open because maybe this is going to be like a segment in which we are doing something else and therefore i'm stopping to use the concrete wall over here and i'm just going to convert this into the invisible wall because this is where i'm going to use some other things in a later tutorial um, to make sure that we do have a nice habitat i'm just going to go all the way behind the uh, mountain we created over here and then i'm just going to rejoin basically over here and what i want to do is since this is the backstage um, i'm going to put down the gate already and this is going to be i'm just going to use the glass habitat gate even though i'm not sure if it's really new or if i'm just like confused right now it might not be new so i'm going to put down the gate um right over there i just need to see sometimes a little bit weird uh because yeah i disabled angle snap but it's still on anyways we're going to put the gate here and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the steel mesh and I'm going to basically put down um, this as a straight segment, making it the longest available segment. And then just going to try to have like a nice little 
connection back here very nice and what i do right now is i'm just going to drag that into the mountain as much as i can there you go uh, so that this is nicely connected i actually want to have that three meters of height so i'm just dragging it all the way up to three meters as you can see over here the gate can actually remain lower so i'm just dragging the gate lower and i actually don't want to have this pillar as a whatever this is pillar like brick i want to have this let's say wood and oops i can't change that one it's because of that one right so i'm just going to do it that way and make it a wood piece there you go and i can turn that back into uh, let's say corrugated over here and there you go this is how the entrance look at that size but um it's not done yet right so what we are going to do instead is we are just going to use again the null barrier click where we want to start click null barrier again and now i'm just going to show you another way of building this just click it and then drag the edge to where you want to have it click again and then you can basically do the same thing again sometimes i find this method very helpful so you don't need to always change with your mouse down here you can just drag it all the way as long as it goes and then you know just leave it where you need to be and then you can do the same and actually reconnect like so boom there you go now we are all set we've done the barriers and um, I find this very ugly in the front here so I'm just doing something about this um, first of all I'm going to select all these pieces and I'm going to lower them down as much as possible to one meter because I want to have like a very low wall so that you can actually see the animals and that we create a certain uh, eye level with the, the habitat in the back so another thing that really bugs me is basically how that looks uh, with these ugly kind of uh, concrete pillars in between i'm not a big fan of these pillars so i'm going to show you another lovely little trick also i'm not a big uh, fan of the color so i'm going to change the color accordingly so you can see there are a couple of um, options but i want to go with a very very bright concrete uh, color and just giving a tiny bit of extra coloring Maybe that's even too much. There you go. Just have this lightly yellowish tint in it. Um, I'm a big fan of that. And now what you can do is you can just select those pillars and then replace them with whatever works. Not all of them work. So you have to click your way through and see if certain things work. Actually, in this case, actually, I think it's only the wooden and this brick, the Gabion works, that one doesn't, that one doesn't, that one, that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert on which ones work. Okay, so it's actually only the wood one. I'm a big fan of using the wood one because as you can see, it just creates that very thin layer in between. And the more straight your piece is, um, sometimes there is even no connection visible at all. Um, so it kind of, you know, creates this wonderful uh, smooth looking concrete face. And then the only thing you have to do later on uh, is to hide these pillar nubsies away. I've no idea how you would call these little heads popping out there. Um, I just call them nubsies for the moment. So there you go. Uh, everything is nice and smooth now. You can see you could even go over this edge now and try to make that a little bit better by just replacing this with this one and then just try to kind of make this and I don't know oh wait I have to actually do it a different way just like so and then try to make sure that this is a bit better look at that this looks sweet and now let's use the right color scope there you go and all looks a lot more smooth a lot more nice I forgot about that one okay um, and so you can basically just change that into a wooden piece as well and last but not least as this gives us now the habitat you click on that and this is the habitat given we can call this tutorial habitat um, this leaves the habitat open and as soon as animals are in you can actually see where traversable area is but what you can already see and that's pretty cool you can already hit h and then go to habitat and sec select the staff traversable area and you are already granted with the view of the staff members where they can walk in your given habitat so as soon as you have placed down um, your habitats you can already get a good view of where your um, zookeepers are able to go which is very helpful in terms of putting certain things down and where they need to go and what you can see right away is since we uh, do have like a invisible border they can even walk a lot further into this space over here even though that's 
not even part of the habitat anymore. Just that as a little info. I'm a big fan of the fact that you can check this right away. Um, but uh, this is all we can do in today's uh, episode about the uh, barriers. That was the barrier tutorial. One last thing we are going to look into is an underground viewing because that's also where you can use habitats for and uh, barriers for. And I'm going to show you with this example how you can actually make sure that over here in the middle is going to be a viewing area. Now, first of all, get rid of the water in here and then make sure that you find a location in which you want to create the water facade. Now, I'm going to say that this is going to be right over here. Make sure to use the mode flat top and editable bottom. Um, that is the latest one over here. Just create that one and then you start all the way on the top. You go in here, just build these pieces. You can also keep them straight until you have a very solid wall like that. Now you go back to terrain, go back to the water option, fill in the water and you can see automatically this wall will be holding back the water. This only works with a solid or like a solid wall piece, which is either the concrete piece, the red brick piece, or it is the thick glass. Those pieces are the only ones that work. Um, sometimes there's a weird bug where also the wood locks work. I'm not sure if it works right now. Oh yeah, it actually does. Um, yeah, realistically that wouldn't work, but uh, this is the way it can work and you can use also different types of wall pieces with it if you want. And then you've got your viewing and you can most likely also pull that down to have a very much almost uh, infinity pool-ish look to the side. As you can see over here, I can just pull it down. This is the reason I need to pull down this but I forgot about that. Now, this is how you do that and you've got your wonderful underwater viewing over here where you can see some animals just dive along if they want to. Um, so that is a little heads up. Now that was it with the barrier tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. I certainly still do enjoy making these tutorials for you. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. And I talk to you in the next one where we're going to actually look into building.